The following program is sponsored by Friends of Life Outreach International. Next on Life Today, Jay Richards debunks the most popular misconceptions about prosperity and the flow of money. People that I think are just completely confused on economics and politics, they want to help people. The question is, if we really want to help people, we need to not just have a heart for the poor, we need to have a mind for the poor. And that requires understanding these basic economic principles that God's built into the created order. And when we know that, and when we adjust our society to take account of those realities, flourishing happens. you to life today. I'm James Robinson, Betty and my beautiful wife of uh, soon to be 57 years. Thanks for hanging in there. <laughs> I know you. a lot of you are saying that is one strong woman right there. <laughs> and she definitely is. She's not only beautiful, she's very strong. I, I'm holding in my hand a book that when I say in many ways it changed my life, it created relationships, it changed the lives of many church leaders, and I think a lot of business leaders and a lot of real thinkers, and a lot of people that hadn't been thinking and knowing what they needed to think about. It's titled Money, Greed, and God, and it's by Jay Richards. Jay Richards and I wrote a New York Times bestseller called Indivisible, and uh, I think it ought to be a textbook in every school in America, from starting with junior high and high school level all the way through the highest academic levels. It's that important. And I would say that this book is probably really the source of inspiration for that book. And it brought together more pastor leaders to understand that if you really love your neighbor and you really want what the perfect father wants for him, who actually knows what everybody needs and who knows how it's delivered. It's always delivered in love if it's going to be truly effective. And they saw that You've got to have a compassion connection and you've got to require oversight, accountability, responsibility on the part of every person you see who has tremendous needs, that you never meet the need properly by setting up some social system of doling out people's money, which is so often taken in control by people who don't have the real best interests of people. And we allow that to happen, and it hurts everybody, and it destroys the economy. And that is right now being promoted in the United States of America by more presidential candidates and political candidates than any time, I believe, in the history of this nation. And it's, it's almost impossible to, to even imagine it's happening, but they're proclaiming socialism, which is a slight step down from outright communism. It's the, the foolishness of uh, men's thinking that gets them into this nonsense that leads to all manner of bondage. And socialism, Jay deals with, and at the request of the publishers of the book, which is 10 years ago, they're bringing it back with a great expanded emphasis right up front on the danger of socialism because it's the way you make everybody poor. Are you listening to me? I don't care what candidate says it. I don't care how charismatic they are. I don't care how attractive they are, how smart you think they are. It is pure suicidal insanity to turn the wealth of people over to any form of monopoly, power, political power, a pharaoh, Caesar, emperor, any power, and think people are going to be better for it. And Jay handles it well. Now, Jay, I, I can't tell you how much I respect you. I cannot even explain how much great thinkers and great people appreciate what you've done because you have taken an absolute truth and you have fleshed it out, not only historically and with irrefutable evidence, historically confirmed, you have biblically confirmed what God says about it and how people have misused what God says to deceive people into believing socialism is actually a Christian practice. And you have disproved it and yeah. you've told us the truth. From the bottom of my heart, I want to thank you. I mean, I welcome you back to life today. Great to be just, with you just, guys again. Just download on us. Oh, yeah. Well, you've already you made my me. argument for me, <laughs> James. What am I going to do? I'm telling you, Jay, what 
you what you argue changed my life in many ways because it gave me understanding. Well, this and was the many book. People. Yeah, this connected us. You called it me really after did. you read it after our friend Jim Garlow mentioned it to you. And I mean, the book was for me. It was actually uh, a work of passion because I had been as a college student, honestly confused on all these economic questions. I thought of myself as a Christian socialist, and the socialists were talking about the poor, right? So it sounded nice. But I thought, well, you know, if we're actually going to help poor people, they might want to know something about economics. So I studied economics more carefully. Uh, and before I got out of college, I'm happy to say I realized that socialism is the one proven way not to help poor people. I mean, the 20th century was one big experiment with the socialist idea. And so I was noticing that these ideas then, after I was out of college and graduate school, I'm back on Christian college campuses, were alive and well. I mean, you know, we're in 2000. So the Soviet Union has collapsed. You think it's all over. And Christian colleges were talking about this again. And so when I wrote the book and it first came out in 2009, my publisher said, Jay, you're kind of beating a dead horse with socialism. Nobody's talking about that. So, <laughs> And they weren't at the time. I said, look, it's coming. But I paired it back. Uh, but this time they said, you know, maybe we'll beef up that socialism discussion a little bit because, I mean, here we are here. 10 years yeah. later. Yeah. And national candidates actually invoke it. And that's a that's unparalleled in American history. Socialism has never polled well in national elections. And so they have major popular candidates talking about socialism and young voters, uh, majority of them saying they like it. This is we're in a new and kind of scary moment. It's hard to believe uh, what we're watching, Jay. It, it's it's almost, I guess because I did have at least enough interest in history, and I did thoroughly, let's say, read, meditate on, actually, and go to the scriptures and to see just exactly how accurate what you're saying really, really is. And uh, to think that I'm hearing church leaders in some circles yes. saying that uh, the New Testament church was socialist. And we put articles on the stream, which mm -hmm. is a website that yes. we've launched together that's trying to get people to see wisdom flowing from many tributaries, and it's helping. And we've dealt with socialism quite effectively, but when you hear them take that passage over there about them selling and giving to the poor, which yes. was an act of compassion and love, and and what we're doing today with socialism has no compassion, Nothing. connection, and oversight. Not at all. And everyone, you know, it's Acts 2. The, the ch early church in Jerusalem, right after Pentecost, the Holy Spirit told them to, to sell their possessions and share uh, in common. And so people say, well, isn't that socialism? I say, well, are you, do you have a socialist family? I mean, you share things in common in your family. Nobody would say your family is socialist. What we had was thousands of Jews come from around the Roman world. Thousands become Christians, right? And so many thousands are away from home, away from their jobs. And in that crucial moment, an emergency situation, the Holy Spirit told the local Christians, right, who had jobs and money, sell some of your stuff and share with your fellow believers. For all we know, that went on for six weeks or maybe six months. Paul never in any of his letters advised that this was the way the churches should be set up. Uh, this was a sort of temporary solution of sharing. But notice the Roman centurions weren't showing up and breaking down doors and confiscating private property. <laughs> it has nothing to do with the socialism of the 20th century. But I'm amazed how many Christians sort of superficially read that passage of sharing, voluntary sharing, and confuse that with socialism, which the state absorbs all the private property. These are just completely different things. Well, you know, when you see what's going on right now and you watch what's happening in the colleges, and mm -hmm. I know you, you probably never thought it would get the momentum that it's mm -hmm. got, what, what do you think people need to hear from you? And if they read the book, you're not only going to show them the foolishness of that, but in my opinion, you show them that the greatest cure for poverty is the free market yes. enterprise opportunities. If we have the ability to take our God-given gifts and, and really apply them mm -hmm. and what God has given to us as resources and develop it, and you point out the importance of personal property yes. and ownership, oversight, and God said don't even covet your neighbor's property. So exactly. he's confirming the importance of that ownership and that oversight because if you have ownership, you give oversight. That's responsibility, yeah. accountability. So what you're actually showing people is if you really want to help the poor, let wealth increase but show the wealth creator that they need to do something other than just turn all their wealth over to the federal government, Absolutely. another form of Pharaoh, which yeah. will bring people in bondage. They need to give oversight to it. I pointed this out, tell me if I'm right. Mm -hmm. Buffett and Gates 
had enough wisdom, which they had a lot of wisdom to yeah, make the wealth sure. they did, but they certainly didn't leave all their wealth, which people say they're leaving all their wealth <laughs> to, to help others. They didn't leave it to Uncle Sam. No, they, they didn't did. leave they it to federal private, government. Private foundations. Private foundations, exactly. No, that's exactly right. I mean, the, the sort of key thing that I wish all Christians would understand is that human beings are made in the image of the creative God. And so what we want in an economic system is a system that allows us to create value, to create wealth that wasn't there before. So it's not all just about dividing up a, a limited pie. It's about having a system in which people can use their God-given ingenuity to create wealth and value that was not there before for themselves and for others. And we actually know the kinds of systems that do that in which you have limited government and private property and rule of law and economic freedom. Whenever you have that, uh, you get a massive amounts of wealth created. And that's, if you're worried about economic poverty, the only solution to economic poverty for a culture is for wealth to be created. And then of course you have emergency situations. So that's what charity is for, is for emergency situations in which somebody's just about to starve to death or die of thirst. That's what charity oh, is for. Oh, you have a natural disaster. Exactly. And who is it that steps up to really meet the need? Thank it's God Christian that we ministries. do have some assistance, yes. that the, the voters have said we need to make sure that we have some emergency Absolutely. funds. We do want that, it's right. Definitely. But who is it that steps in? Who is it that puts their hand to the situation? It's the neighbor that loves that's their neighbor right. that gets involved. Absolutely. That's always been the strength of our country. No, I mean, it makes perfect sense, though, because if you know someone well, you know exactly what they need. Yeah. And there's also going to be an accountability between you. Mm -hmm. If you're getting a check from the federal government in Washington, D.C., that's right. You're just being treated as a, as a human. It's a generic human. There's no accountability. And so that's why I'm convinced the best charity is private charity that's pushed down to individuals dealing with other individuals. One of the things that really bothers me, too, with, mm -hmm. with this socialism theme, so yeah. to speak, is that it's building such hate Absolutely. for the successful person. No, Oh, absolutely. It's, it's, it's really based on covetousness. I mean, it's that, that final commandment, right, that we're not to covet the property of another person. And so notice when you hear people defend socialism, they rarely are actually talking about poverty. They don't say, okay, well, there's poor people and we need to figure out how to help them. That's usually not the argument. The argument is that, well, there's some people that are too rich, yeah. right? They're appealing basically to our envy because there's always somebody that's richer than you are, right? Um, and so they appeal to that, but that's actually not the problem. The fact that there's a rich person somewhere, that's not the problem problem any more than the problems that there's somebody healthy somewhere, right? Well, it's you, poverty. Eventually, you're going to spend all that money and there's that's not right. going to be any more wealthy people. No, that's people. exactly and right. Then where are, you, where are you going to get it? No, that's exactly right. What you want is that people that are capable of creating wealth to be free to actually do that. Well, we ought to be thanking God for them because they are providing 85 to 90 percent of right. basically the total income of the federal budget. Yeah. And we're hating the people that are making it possible for them to do the things we say that are good. And by the way, it ought to be government of the people, by the people, and for the people, which means government is overseen by the people, but we don't do that. We mm -hmm. opt out. And one of the worst things you'll ever hear said to Christians is Christians need to stay out of politics. In other words, give the people who control the future of the country and the future of freedom, give it to the people that don't believe in God, don't love God, and who believe the father of lies. And watch what happens to it. You're seeing what happens. Happens. It's total chaos. It's insanity. Mm. Excuse me, Jay. I didn't mean to cut in <laughs> preaching it. But listen, man, what you what you wrote here. When I tell you that it set me on fire to see people know the truth so we could actually know how to help the poor. Mm. If we've got a neighborhood, and one of the things mm -hmm. you point out is that that close oversight of what's going on. You know what's going on with your neighbor. You, you, you're going to ruin your children if you just give your children money and you don't watch right. to see if they're responsible and accountable, you can feed them into a drug habit or all kind of addictive practices yep. and you have ruined that child right. if you don't teach them. The federal government takes the wealth of the wealthy, mm -hmm. takes the money that they turned over and they're yeah. foolish entrepreneurs who are giving all this wealth to academic institutions yeah. to teach against the very thing that enabled them to make wealth That's and endow exactly the right. institution. They're endowing institutions yep. that are destroying the freedom that gave them the opportunity to be successful and have money. Now then we're turning that same wealth over to an overseer that is keeping people dependent upon it and requiring no accountability, no responsibility, right. and no oversight and no compassion connection. On the mission field, yep. we're directly connected. And we exactly. don't keep them dependent. We get them on their feet, Absolutely. we get them solid, and then we even try to get our viewers to move the feeding to the schools. And by mm -hmm. the way, our viewers are not as excited about feeding kids in school as they are when they're starving to death. Mm -hmm. And I'm saying in impoverished nations, if we're able to do it, when we get a child healthy, let's encourage them to be at school, 
by Absolutely. putting the food there. So see, yeah. we're trying to do this. And by the way, the World Food Program took our example and then put it in all over the yeah. world. Thank God for that. Absolutely. By the way, it was a Christian Democrat that did that. <laughs> so miraculously, there's some Democrats that still yeah. know what sure. God's love and what responsibility and account looks like. Well, they're, they're getting fewer in number. Though. Well, yeah, but then I really do think that everybody in the debate actually, they want to help people. You know, I mean, people that I think are just completely confused on economics and politics, they want to help people. The question is, if we really want to help people, we need to not just have a heart for the poor, we need to have a mind for the poor. And that requires understanding these basic economic prin principles that God's built into the created order. And when we know that, and when we adjust our society to take account of those realities, flourishing happens. You know, Jay, just sitting here talking to you, I want to I simply tell you this, that you're, you're actually looking at a miracle here. Here he was, grew up a Presbyterian kid, grew up in a religious setting, but he, he really felt like he was having Marxist ideals. I mean, mm -hmm. you actually yeah. put that on yourself. You said, I was actually getting that close. That's right. I was that off, off target. And he said he began to research. And you studied history. Mm -hmm. You studied the Bible. Yep. You studied some of the great economic minds of history. Right. And they were so brilliant, you found they were right with every single thing they said. And you saw how Karl Marx and other socialist thinkers mm -hmm. began to manipulate people because of needs they have that were yes. never never seen with a compassion connection right. or with even a love or a desire to help. And they bought total suicidal That's right. practices. 100 million people killed in the 20th century because of communism. Say that again? 100 million people killed by their own governments. I'm not talking about deaths in war. I'm talking about millions of people killed by their government. The anger and the fire and the fury that is propelling people right now with this mindset, they're the ones that are going to attack police, mm -hmm. law enforcement, yeah. every real legitimate form of authority. They're going to rebel against everything. They won't tolerate free speech if it's not their speech on college mm -hmm. campuses. You know that's true. It, oh, it's, it's dangerous for somebody it is. who believes what you believe now absolutely. to even walk on some of these campuses. Now listen <laughs> to me, folks. You say, well, how do we put that fire out? With transforming truth that's here, it's in the Word of God. And what Jay's done is he's taken the Word of God, he's applied it applying historical proof, irrefutable evidence. Just like I said, 100 million people killed because of this nonsense. There have been hundreds of millions throughout history that have lost their life yeah. because of poverty and starvation Absolutely. and total, let's just say that really the effects of not doing things God's way and doing yeah. it right. And Jay, I believe what he's presenting is revolutionary. And I believe it's revolutionary in the most positive way. This is a book about issues we face today that clarifies. Would you join me and Betty in saying thanks to Jay Richards for going on this journey of research and study and the effort it takes to write and share. And thank you for being thank you, my guys. brother and my co-laborer because we're trying to get God's loving arms around all the people that he wants to help. Mm -hmm. He knows how to help them and you're trying to help people see how we can actually be a blessing. Jay, you know, I think our viewers believe that if we can give a cup of water in Jesus' name, that it's one of the greatest things they'll ever do. And I think when you, you see what's going on in the life of precious mothers and precious family members, and you know that you are the perfect miracle answer to the needs that you're going to see, and it should make your heart leap with joy to know, I can be their prayer answer. I am the answer to their heart cry. Watch. Kukomana, chimoemwe. Kukondwa bomana. Wadi kukondwa kumubona sodi onse. Pato ngwa kusega nguwe. Wai kujatuwa bomuita. Hewa tiyaba na mesuri onse. Taigone yabo tuto wapati tonsi. Di onse nkuji badera. Andiswe pena umpotu nyua. Mutu walo mba nchinga inoguti. Tumuto lewe kliniki. Put yourself in Cecilia's place. Your tiny son struck down by the very water that should sustain him. Waves of grief that leave you breathless. The unrelenting fear that screams at you from every bucket of water you draw from the village's only source. Water containing the same contaminants that killed your son. Water you have no choice but to give to your other children. 
kolon kabo ne menda ya kujala ni testimony tandika lupi mugumi wangu orono banyo menda bana bangu tandi bifuri ambo ndiye ya jintu jaka ndiji tigira siti utandi bifuri like countless mothers in Africa, Cecilia is so strong, despite the dire situation that threatens those she loves. With courage and humility, she spoke to us from her heart in a language not her own, desperate to be understood as she pleaded on behalf of her village. We are asking for the bowl. We are suffering here at Insatia Village. We drink dead water in the streams. We are asking for help. That precious lady worked very hard to be able to say it where we can understand it. I just hope everybody understands the grief that these precious mothers and families are experiencing to lose their children. And uh, I, I think, Betty, that our viewers, you, you are, we've told you, the most remarkable people because you don't turn away when you see a need. Our viewers have seen a need, Betty, and they've stepped up and said, hey, I want to give, I don't just want to give a cup of water, I want to give them a well. That's right. Every time we have asked, you have helped. Thank you so very, very much. And I know your heart had to be touched by that mother that had lost her little three-year-old boy that was so full of life, she said. And, and now that he's gone, she's concerned, she's worried. Her heart will go through that same sorrow with her other children if she doesn't get some help for them. She can't do anything else. She has to give them that water. That's all they have. Let's be that hope. Let's be that miracle for her in her life with her other children. Please continue and let's join together, hearts and hands again, and let's give to the needy that so desperately needs some fresh water. I'm looking down here at this beautiful picture, a beautiful person, Sheila Walsh. She's got her hands folded and the title of the book is Praying Women. Can't tell you how much we love you. That was a praying woman we just heard, Betty. Yes. And I'm telling you, praying women, I know there are a lot of men that help. I, I, there are men that actually, we've got a few men that try to drill a well every month. They've been blessed to be able to do that. God bless you men. But I know it's because of the wife. She may have been the one that got your attention. Mm -hmm. But I know it's praying women that are moving mountains. I know it's praying women that are bringing about the answers to prayers like that. Lord, today, give us an outpouring. We're just beginning now this emphasis on water for life. We're in the early stages. And you've enabled us to drill thousands of wells, but we drill them one well at a time. They're $4,800. You can see that they have water available, but in those rivers, it's filthy. But when you get subsurface water, there's a filtering system that takes place, and we're able to deliver clean water and make it accessible. And in the areas where they have boreholes, we know the water is subsurface. We can get it easily. That's why we're able to do it for $4,800. Could you drill a well? Could you give part of a well, maybe $2,400 and pray somebody matches it? You got a well. $1,200 and three people? You know what? If you can do it, I believe you will. But be sure you hear what I'm about to say. The majority of the support comes from people who will give $48. $48. Ten people water the rest of their life, 144, 30 people. Now, where could you put $144 or $48 and have a lasting effect like that? Totally life-changing. And we'll be telling them about Jesus. We're sending Sheila's book on praying women and on a great prayer thrust that's being initiated right now that's going to shake the world to everyone who gives. We've got a beautiful pillow cover that will bless you and a beautiful... Uh, throw that you can use as a place of warmth that has the Lord's Prayer on it. You can be covered with the Lord's Prayer. You're going to appreciate these gifts, but you're giving the greatest gift of all. You're giving life because of the love of God. Would you go right now and get your bank card, go online or dial that number and use that card like a check? Please do it now. If you write a check, make it to life, but call us. We need to know 
that you're sending it in so we can tell the missionaries. Thank you for making that gift. Today, a mother living in extreme poverty will do the unthinkable. Give her children dirty, disease-filled water that she knows could kill them. With no other choice, what's a mother to do? With your help, clean water is on the way. Mission Water for Life is the answer to a mother's prayer to save the lives of her children, to offer them a bright future free from the fear of death. With your gift today, you can help drill and establish 350 water wells this year. Your gift of $24 will help provide clean water for five children. A gift of $48 will help provide for 10, $72 will provide for 15, and $144 will help provide life-giving water for 30 people for a lifetime. With your gift, we'll send you Praying Women, How to Pray When You Don't Know What to Say. In her new book, Sheila Wall shows you how to reignite your conversation with God to become a strong praying woman. With your gift of $100 or more, please request the Power of Prayer bundle. This bundle includes a cozy throw blanket adorned with words of the Lord's Prayer, a decorative pillow cover, as well as Sheila's book. All three are encouraging reminders of how there's power in your faith-filled prayers. Finally, please consider a gift of $1,200 to help provide water for 250 people or a gift of $4,800 to help sponsor a complete well. And you may request our brand new commemorative bronze sculpture, A Mother's Strength. Please call, write, or make your gift online. I, I want all of you to know that this beautiful, beautiful, beautiful bronze, and it's A Mother's Strength. Betty, are you amazed that there's three? She's carrying her baby and, and she's carrying <laughs> water. God. I'm telling you, ladies, be praying women and be an answer to prayer. We're sending this to all of you who make a $1,200 gift or more toward one of those uh, uh, beautiful wells and all the other gifts. I want to say thanks to Jay, and I'm going to just say this. If you want Jay's book today and you help us give water, you say, would you send me Jay Richard's book? Yes, we will. And I promise you it'll bless you. Jay, I love you. you I too. thank God for you. I pray God uses you to wake people up on academic institutions <laughs> in every area of American life. Would you thank God for Jay Richards and thank him for coming to the show? Thank you, thank you for being a really great friend. Thank you for all you've done. God bless all of you. Thank you for your help and your prayers and giving water for life. Are you concerned about your family being ill-equipped to manage resources when you pass away? Do you want to leave a legacy gift that impacts the lives of others? As a free service to our friends and partners, Life Planning Services, a ministry of Life Outreach International, is here to help with your estate planning needs and chart your financial future. Do not put off this important step to protect your loved ones and leave a lasting legacy. Contact Life Planning Services today. If you are in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, come be a part of the Life Today studio audience. Go to lifetoday.org forward slash tickets, lifetoday.org forward slash tickets. Life Today is made possible by the supporters of Life Outreach International. Your gift will be used exclusively for the exempt purposes of life. The ministry features specific outreaches as examples of the programs it supports and conducts. Gifts are considered to be without restriction as to use unless explicitly stipulated by the donor. The ministry is a member of the ECFA.